Hey everybody, today it's going to be another community poll recap. This is number 10. I've done one every month for the past 10 months. So we're going to get on the community tab for this channel. We're going to go over the results and see what everybody thinks. I put up a new cultural or political related poll every three days. I try to keep it as unbiased as I can. So we're going to start with the oldest poll that is at least one month old. And we've got Chance Mitch McConnell resigns before his next Senate election in 2026. 15% say very likely, 11 likely, 20 23, 50, 50, 34 unlikely, 17% very unlikely. This was after McConnell froze on camera after some sort of press conference. I think there was talk about him having many strokes. Maybe he's fine. Maybe he's not. Most people tend to think he's not going to resign. At this point, I would have to agree with that. But you never know. He's in his 80s. Something could absolutely change. Then there would be a huge battle over appointing his replacement. If he doesn't resign, I would like to think he's not going to run again. But that's a different question. Next, what's your opinion of Bill Clinton? Clinton, 5% very favorable, 23 favorable, 26 neutral, 28 unfavorable, 17 very unfavorable. So this is pretty much spread out. It all depends how you want to look at it. If you focus on his presidency, it does seem like economically there was some prosperity at that time, but you might focus on NAFTA, outsourcing and manufacturing. Maybe you even focus on his impeachment, or maybe you look at some of his humanitarian work that his foundation has done post-presidency. A lot of different things you could look at with Bill Clinton. So I understand these results being spread out. There's one thing I can add here that is a positive about Clinton. That's back during a better era of late night comedy. Plenty of material with him and George W. Bush before everything got hyper polarized. So maybe those 5% that said very favorable, they're just nostalgic for the comedy. Let's go to the next question. We've got level of interest in the first Republican primary debate. This is spread out all over the place. 26% very interested. 33 moderately. 19 slightly. 22 not interested. Without Trump there, I don't think the interest could possibly be as high as it would be with Trump. It's nice to see what candidates on either side have to say, but it did seem kind of empty, kind of like on the other side, if Marianne Williamson and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. had a debate without Joe Biden, there's going to be a little bit of interest, but at the same time, it's going to be kind of a joke. Next question, what is your opinion on requiring candidates to sign loyalty pledges in order to debate? Not much support for this at all. We've got 10% that say strongly support, another 5 support, 22% neutral, 36 opposed, 28 strongly opposed. I asked this because that was one of the requirements to participate in the Republican debates, and that is you have to support the eventual winner. To me, that kind of seems childish. It is nice to get support from your party, especially after you beat everybody, but sometimes things change. Maybe you still want to have a debate while keeping your options open. I'm not a fan of this myself. Also, I don't even think it's enforceable. You could easily just sign the pledge and then do whatever you want. I could easily see Trump doing that, and what would happen if he did? Not much. Next, 2024 swing for president in New Jersey compared to its 15.9% Democrat margin in 2020. We've got 29% think it's going to go three or more toward the Democrats. Another 20%, one to 2.9 toward the Dems. 22% think it's going to be about even. And another 22 think it's going to go toward the GOP by one to 2.9. 6% think it's going to swing three or more toward the GOP. So kind of spread out here, but more toward the Democrats. That 15.9%, that's already a significant margin. It is a blue state, but I wouldn't be surprised if this swung at least one tenth of a percent back toward the Republicans. Maybe I'm wrong and it goes 19 points for Biden. That's a possibility. I think a lot of these questions about the trends are kind of your gut reaction because a lot of people are going to be wrong. You could point to past trends or demographics or polls, but who knows what the national environment and turnout is going to be. But to me, the winner here of three or more toward the Democrats, that seems like a little bit too much for me, but I'm wide open to being completely wrong. Next, a view of the political response to the Hawaii wildfires. 10% approve, 13% neutral, a whopping 66% disapprove, another 11% not sure or no opinion. I asked this question because it seemed like I was hearing different things about the response. I've heard a lot of state response and federal response has been completely lacking, but I've also heard the opposite and that they're doing everything they can do. So I hate these kinds of questions because it seems like everything is so hyper politicized. No matter what happens, there's going to be two opposite reactions to the exact same events. In this poll, it seems pretty clear that the response is negative. I guess it all depends on what you see and what you hear. Probably the more compelling breakdown would be Biden supporters that disapprove of the response and Trump supporters that approve of it. Probably not a lot of crossover there, but you never know. Next question, what is your opinion of Elizabeth Warren? 9% favorable, 25 favorable, 14 neutral, 13 unfavorable, 38 very unfavorable. Like a lot of these, there's some great comments here, and it all depends on what you want to focus on. She is known for going after corporate regulation and the banking industry. That, along with labor and economic issues, I think should be generally viewed as favorable on policy. Now, on some culture and social justice issues, that's 
where I think a lot of her disapproval is going to come in. She does have the baggage of using her ethnic background to her advantage. That, I think, is going to be off-putting for people. And there could be some infighting between her and Bernie Sanders back in 2016. As far as her personality goes, she has energy. I'll give her that. But I always thought that she came off as trying too hard. But sometimes it helps if you look like a fighter. Other times you might look a little more frazzled. So we've got a mixed result here for Warren. Definitely some people do approve. More don't approve. That's fine by me. I hope if she saw this poll, she would not think that the people who view her unfavorably are just because she's a woman. Next question, what should happen with the level of U.S. spending on Ukraine? 14% say increase, 33% maintain current spending, and the winner here, 49% say decrease spending, 4% not sure, no opinion. I posed a recent question about spending on Israel, still waiting on more results for that one, but for this one, this has become a difficult and politically polarizing issue. I think there's a lot of things internationally that could use funding, but is it fair for someone in the U.S. to not want to support those things abroad? I think it is fair, and I think it's especially fair given how there are so many things happening domestically. There's so many things that need funding here, but it seems like when something happens internationally, politicians want to get to it immediately, and there's pretty much no limits. I understand that being frustrating for the average American. Now, it doesn't mean we can't do anything overseas, but I think asking questions about it, having some hesitancy is fair game. Maybe you want to know exactly where that money is going. Maybe you don't want it to be endless. That seems reasonable. And I think you could also believe in a cause without necessarily thinking money should be spent on it. It's a complicated question. I don't know what the right answer is. Nobody wants to see bad people gain power. But at the same time, having some skepticism on that amount of spending for that amount of time is what I think is reflected by having only 14% think that we should increase spending. Next question. How do you think the January 6th defendants have been treated by the justice system? 28% too lenient. 26% about right. 43% too harsh. 4% not sure. No opinion. This is another highly politically charged question. If you think that day was one of the absolute worst things in the history of the country and everybody there that had the minorist infraction has to have the book thrown at them, then I would assume you're satisfied. But if there were all kinds of stories about people getting off scot-free, then I could see people thinking not enough has happened. But my view is I think there's degrees of everything that happened. For the people that were there and it got out of hand and it spilled inside the Capitol, then of course something had to happen. Now what should that sentence be? Probably not a whole lot if it's just trespassing. But the more serious charges where people are given decades, that to me seems like overkill. And I would think it would seem like overkill for anyone that wants to see criminal justice reform, reduce the prison population, eliminate cash bail. Those people, I would think, would be for reduced sentencing. But at the same time, who really knows? People are complicated. They have views that are all over the place. All I do is ask the questions and see what everybody thinks. The last question, 2024 shift for president in Montana compared to its 16.3% GOP margin in 2020. 13% think it's going to go toward the Democrats by three or more. 37% think by one to 2.9. 21% think it's going to be about even. 16% toward the GOP by one to 2.9. And 14% toward the GOP by three or more. This is a tough call. For me, it's going to come down to, does Trump get out the voters like he used to? If he does, then I think this would go a little bit back toward the Republicans. If he doesn't, then I can see it going toward the left. I think the third party vote in Montana also could be a key factor, but you never know, maybe it turns into the next Alaska and lurches like six points toward the Democrats. So that's it. Those are the questions and a little bit about what I think about each. So I appreciate all the votes and I hope you enjoy the variety of questions and the neutrality of the choices. Everybody's going to have a little bit of bias. Trying to minimize it, that's the key. A lot of great comments on here on all sides. Some people are really hardcore on either side. I do read almost every comment. Once in a while, YouTube somehow hides it or blocks it. I like to see the back and forth. Of course, like with anybody, sometimes I'm going to disagree with somebody. Sometimes I'm kind of apathetic. Sometimes I have a strong opinion. But this is what you guys think. So let me know in the comments. What do you think about any of these polls? Do you still like the recap videos? How about the questions? You think it's a great variety and a great mix of comments? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.